Hi, I'm Varushka Normando. Welcome to Rose Yoga, Tapping into Heart Courage. And today I'm with a dear sister, friend, soul um, weaver and adventurer, <laughs> Jessica Darlington. We're speaking today from Montreal, Canada. And uh, we met back in 2016 at this beautiful retreat that she was co-hosting on the Big Island of Hawaii called the, uh, the Feminine Fire of Creation, I believe. And we had a cosmic, amazing week together, very transformational. And we're both Leo sisters. And even in our gene keys, it turned out that our profile was completely identical, which I don't even know what the chances of that is. And, you know, having someone to connect with during the whole pandemic, you know, us being in our different bubbles, actually connecting to someone in a totally different reality and environment, yet thinking, feeling, experiencing, realizing all the exact same things, just it's it's, there's no price to pay to have someone who actually understands you. So today I'm so delighted to connect and speak with her about her journey and everything that she's gathered and distilled and all the systems she's studied. She's like a relentless detective, you know, a woman after my own heart of just constantly digging and digging, digging of like, who are we and why are we here and what is our gift? And she just gave me a beautiful, extensive reading last week that covers a lot of different systems of astrology, Vedic astrology, numerology, human design, gene keys, and also um, your family name and like the your roots and the origins of your name and who you are, you know, at a core level that when I when she told me about some of my family names and the roots, you know, it really opens up and triggers things in your whole being that open you up more to innately who you are you know it's not a logical thing and so um today we're going to speak more about systems of gnosis and you know the path to self-knowledge because there's no right or wrong and there's just perfect timing and the way and when we find these little treasures and jewels about ourselves so I'm very delighted to do some explorations to share with our audience. So Jessica Darlington, welcome. I'd love for you to introduce yourself a little bit and share how you came to the service you're offering right now of really giving people like a distilled version of some of their cosmic makeup, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the beautiful intro and for your beautiful words. Uh, listening to them triggered some memories. I'm very honored to be here speaking with you. Uh, I respect your path enormously and everything that you've done up until this point has always inspired me um, and to dig deeper, to continue digging. And um, yeah, I just feel very grateful to be with you here and now discussing a lot of it, a culmination of things we've come to together <laughs> and uh, bringing it forth to the listeners to hopefully inspire others to um, continue digging and searching for um, pieces of themselves that perhaps have been lost or that just need to be seen. Um, there's so much involved in this work and uh, I embarked on it around 2016, right around the time that we had our retreat. And I say our retreat, <laughs> because although I was co-hosting it for the listeners that don't know, Marushka was actually invited to the retreat to participate and bring some of her gifts forward, uh, but ended up just inspiring me and blowing me away with everything that she brought forward. I felt like I was going to her retreat. <laughs> So that was just really intense and powerful, and uh, it was a huge awakening for me. Um, it was a huge awakening, and I also I think an initiation into some of the more shamanic um, experiences that I was having and how to navigate through those. And you had already done so much work on that level, uh, working with synchronicities, working with the unseen, and uh, generating energy, um, alchemizing energy. And so there was just so much that I came home with in my toolbox and the journey hasn't ended. 
<laughs> I'm <laughs> we're still here and um, have uncovered so much more. So um, yeah, that that that's that's really interesting to think back now and to realize that a lot of it was happening around that time. And uh, I don't know about our listeners, but 2015, 2016 was big. There were big changes. And I think part of coming on to our journeys is through these big moments in life, these um, moments of either deep pain or deep sorrow, an event that happens, or just something um, very Uranian that throws us for a loop and, you know, we have to move to a different place or someone in the family passes away and the circumstances of the, of, you know, how change brings forward our gifts is just unbelievable. And so that's why I like to be grateful for, you know, all of the things that I've experienced in my childhood that weren't so pleasant uh, and that um, were very, very difficult to move through. And that took me still many years of uh, working through, but understanding that they play such uh, an important role in allowing me to go inwards in giving me that motivation to go inwards and then really start uncovering who I am to find those strengths to bring forward, to fully embody myself, to fully reclaim myself. And, um, and so that's how it all started. Um, you know, a healing journey and um, just moments where I lost complete control of what was happening. I had to surrender. And then following the trail and meeting beautiful people and beautiful women, beautiful techniques along the way. And then just sort of, you know, whatever I was really inspired by, go and research and um, fully invest a really good amount of time and seeing what the structure is, uh, what the system for healing is, or the system for um, gaining greater knowledge and wisdom about ourselves is. And then um, discovering parts of myself, pulling those forward, and then continuing on my journey. So now I just have this, this basket, this huge basket of tools. <laughs> and so I like to juxtapose all of the tools uh, in, in my basket and when I'm doing readings for other people. And really looking at the patterns that come out and that show themselves through going into all these different systems. And... Uh, it's quite unique, I think, because there are people who, you know, really uh, study one thing extremely well, and they go very, very deep for many, many years. They'll spend a lifetime, and those people are are the way showers to the rest of us who are um, exploring many different systems. And so I'll go to those people who have mastered those systems and listen to what they have to say you know, really take what they've gained over the years um, as like what's concrete within that system and what is valid, what works, and then um, replicate that and learn that method or that technique and then incorporate it into uh, others. So I'm more about the broad we're in the Pisces, we're in the Pisces full moon right now, which is very expansive. It's like the ocean is watery and that's kind of the energy. I have a lot of really strong Neptunian and Pisces uh, placements, 12th house placements in my chart. And so um, this is my space. It's very expansive and I like to incorporate a lot of different things. I actually have to interject in that moment as a practical um, query my north node is in Pisces. So little, little I know. of like, what does that mean for me? Can you give like a little blurb on like what that means for me or how that would be perceived by me? Mm -hmm. Well, north node in Pisces uh, is really about reaching for this higher space, right? So we're here on the material realm and the what you can consider the lower realms, <laughs> very dense matter. And Pisces is the most exalted place to go. So you can think of uh, the drop of water and the ocean and um, hell and heaven, right? And so Pisces is really about this 
very mystical space where we're connecting with spirit, where we're connecting with the higher realms, sort of like this, these lights that um, the Ouroboros that's floating around behind you, this is like very Neptunian, it's a very Pisces type of energy. Um, it's where uh, water turns to steam, so it's the steamy place um, where things are just allowed to be and things don't have to be so concrete. And we can just kind of flow and be in this, in this warm, welcome space. Um, it's also the place of endings. It's finishing, uh, you know, tying up any loose ends and just completely embracing what's new, letting go, surrendering. Um, there's a lot of power in Pisces. It's a very compassionate uh, space to move towards. And it's, it's a lot to do with going in as well, because it's connecting with that place within us, that uh, very spiritual and that place that is kind of our, our soul connection, right? Our, our soul mission, the eternal part of us. And so moving towards that is definitely an interesting North Node. <laughs> um, maybe for some more than others. I think that you've already been tapping into that uh, for a long time, um, you know, on your journeys. I don't know how it started, if you were always able to tap into that energy so easily, or if that's something that you cultivated over the years through experience, um, what, do, what would you say? Well, I was thinking about it yesterday, it came up and, um... It, it's a challenge. I think it's it really is the challenge, however, whatever your north and south node is, because it is like as a mental projector and being a very logical, rational person slash magical uh, person. It's kind of it's the ultimate contradiction because I come from Virgo, which is like one knowing all the details, perfectionism. And then my needing to know, as long as I can remember needing to know the why or get to the bottom of everything. And Pisces is exactly not on a, it's just on a need to know basis. None of your business, let go and let God like step into the ocean over and over. You're not going to get the answers until you get the answer. So it, it's very trying to be in a place of constantly letting go and, and like, knowing you're not going to get the answers on your terms and having to trust and have faith. So I know that ultimately my job is to have faith, but it's not pleasant for the mind whatsoever. So it's a, a major contradiction for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we are in this physical reality and we are grounded here. So it is kind of an unnatural space to move into and requires us to um, detach. Yeah, we have a lot of expectations and there's a lot of things holding us down to um, very uh, rational way of functioning. So it's natural, but I think it's, uh, it's a really um, beautiful place to be heading. And I think that you've been bringing that forward well with the people that you're connecting to, the people that you bring forth on the podcast as well have been really interesting. And they're all kind of people who tap into this space very easily as well. So you're definitely in your element. <laughs> it takes time and it takes letting go and trusting, that's for sure. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it does get fun. It does get fun when you know that you can't know and that you're just going to be open to receiving and surrender to that flow. And I just welcome the universe, like, please blow my mind in a good way. And I love, I call it that sneaky little universe then because often the, the, the outcomes I brace for never happen. You know, it's something so beyond what I could have imagined and it's always way better or more interesting. And then often if some, nothing happens, it's usually for the best too, you know, instead of like missed opportunities or taking it personal, just really knowing that we get exactly what we need. I think that's very important. And um, that's why I had mentioned before the podcast, what was coming up for me in terms of sharing some of the things that I wanted to bring forward 
um, and the gifts uh, that I offer people is the relevance of uh, synchronicity and how that plays into um, like the law of correspondence and the systems that we might tap into, you know, uh, to gain information about where we should go, what we should do next. And it's sort of playing into what you're talking about, how we have to surrender, because mm. if we trust the path, then we understand that whatever's unfolding is unfolding for our highest good. And we can create things and build things and bring them forward and they have power and they can move and do things in the world. But uh, sometimes we're just not meant to do certain things. So we're just not meant to interact with certain people or, and that is within the divine blueprint. It is, we cannot change it. So in Norse mythology, it's the web of weird and the Norns are weaving our fate. And there are certain things that are just um, set in stone. And that's what we can see often in astrological charts, especially now that I'm uh, learning a little bit of your, about Uranian astrology. It's a lot to do with predictive astrology and it's very scientific, very mathematical. And it was used uh, during the war, actually uh, during World War II to um, fight back uh, against what was going on and to be able to predict where bombs were going to be thrown and a whole bunch of, so it's very, very scientific. And, um, um, and in that sense, it is that way. I believe we can tap into that information and see how certain things are just predestined and those things are sort of unchangeable and surrendering to that when we feel it in our bodies and we, when we see it in our lives and understanding, you know what, this isn't, I'm not supposed to go there today, or I'm not supposed to be interacting um, or building a project with that person and, and just really surrendering to that um, and knowing that it is, you know, this is just the way things are. And it's part of the divine blueprint is um, it feels very good, right. To be able to get to that place where we can do that and understand that certain things just, Certain doors aren't meant to be opened <laughs> and then move where the energy is flowing. And when we're moving where the energy is flowing, where there is a beautiful uh, synchronicity, dance of synchronicities that I find start, begins to emerge and where the synchronicities are the strongest is where um, I feel the universe is confirming to me that I should be here that I should be doing this. And there's, it's like a feedback loop, right? So I'll put my energy into something and then the universe will speak back to me and say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then sometimes the universe will say no. And when the synchronicities start getting, <laughs> so, you know, start getting bad or start getting, uh, going down the wrong direction, that's when I, I, you know, I have to sit back and tune back into myself and find the path again. So it's interesting that you're bringing that forward. Yeah. But what do you mean by when the synchronicities aren't good? That, that's how I just heard it. Like how um, mm -hmm. you're well, often uh, you've been on a path where you've really surrendered, especially, you know, since I've known you, you've really been working hard at surrendering to your path, to your destiny and to your gifts. And I think that brings a lot of synchronicities into your life, but you also have the sight, you have that shamanic um, understanding, that shamanic vision that allows you to see them. So it depends on, you know, how the person is hardwired. Some people can't really see synchronicities, you know, even if it was right in front of them, they just wouldn't make the association. So first off, you have to have the sight and you have that sight. And then by surrendering, the universe is is speaking back to you and, you know, uh, encouraging you to continue on your path. So um, you might not have experienced the negative synchronicities as much, but um, if you can imagine something traumatic happening, so you're very tapped into the, the juicy space of the universe, you're having a constant conversation and dialogue with it. And then all of a sudden, something like a car accident happens or the loss of a loved one. And it just, comes out of nowhere. Those synchronicities, because we are partly co-creating them with the universe, can start to uh, mirror back to us our greatest fears, our, our, um, the depths of pain and suffering. 
and the depths of, you know, certain nightmares that we could be living. Right. So um, I've experienced that so I can speak of it. Right. And I think we're all, this is where I've been investigating this dance with the universe and, you know, we want to keep on having beautiful experiences and still at the same time, ensuring that we're um, affecting, you know, ourselves and the world in, in a, in a way that is beneficial for everyone, where we keep on evolving and growing in awareness and in truth. And, uh, but at the same time, create this beautiful uh, experience for ourselves. And so bringing certain elements, every little minute movement that we make is, is altering the web and is interacting with the universal web of life. And so bringing small little elements to the table, such as when you're um, bringing offerings, um, like at Mauna Kea, you know, where you'd bring offerings to uh, different places. Um, it could be you know, it could be places that were offerings were brought for thousands of years, which makes them even more powerful, right? And then by doing that, we're altering the web of weird in our little way, and then the universe responds. And so I think the more powerful the place is, the more powerful our, our intentions are, the more tapped in we are to the emotion and to the, the intention, the more that we can... Uh, create synchronicities on our lives based off of those small little movements. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> I just kind of went off on the- Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, so yeah, I'd like to know like if people are starting this journey of self-knowledge, I'm just curious as far as astrology goes, what do you feel like are some of the most helpful pointers and building blocks to begin with that would give them like kind of an ABC path just as basics or what you have found to be the most insightful for you? Mm -hmm. um, well, transition into answering your question and uh, transition out of synchronicity um, by explaining how um, synchronicity interacts with technology. So synchronicity shows up through everything and it's as well showing up through uh, technology. For example, you know, different videos that we might see online and there's a lot of filters um, that are still in the technology. So it wasn't developed necessarily to weed out all of the nasty stuff, right? We have a whole bunch of nasty stuff in there um, that's actually designed in the software to um, gather information about us, to understand humans. So you have this whole uh, quantum computing machine that's in there and it's, it's basically, uh, it's a, you know, it's a deep learning machine and it's, it's gaining information. And so there's all these different layers that uh, are um, piling themselves up, right? Onto our filters and the way we see the world, the way we perceive the world. So I think the first step in getting to know ourselves isn't necessarily a system, it's really um, eliminating all of these distractions and all of these layers that might be interfering with our ability to tap into ourselves and to truly start to feel our energy. So I think it starts with feeling. And so in doing a digital detox, um, uh, taking time away from television, taking time away from um, just anything that might fill our minds with information and then spending, um, you know, a good month or two, or at least, you know, I, I'd say three tuning in and it could be, you could use uh, journaling, for example, um, sitting quietly in meditation, doing yoga, doing stretching anywhere where we're tapping into the body going for walks, right? Just with nature, where we're alone with ourselves and we're able to start reflecting inwards. I think that's the first step on the journey. And, um, and then it kind of builds from there as we go deeper and we wanna learn more. That, that's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has to start that way though. I don't yeah. think it's possible 
it just makes it very difficult to, to even start feeling ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, to feel our own feelings, to feel our, to hear our own thoughts um, because we have so many distractions. Yeah. Well, for some reason, this, as you're speaking, this is reminding me, you know, I have a lot of synchronicities, but somehow this is bringing up the topic of intention meeting synchronicities. And um, while you were sharing about, you know, getting rid of distractions uh, and made me, I'll tell the story right now, um, <laughs> is, you know, I've been living on Lake Shasta for the last nine months about, and I feel like the message of Mount Shasta has always been like, I'm like, why am I, you know, people talk about, oh, the mountain is making them stay or, you know, what is this thing? Like, usually people stay places because of community or work or a relationship. Um, but here in this neck of the woods, people are like, oh, well, the mountain still wants me to stay. <laughs> and like right from the beginning, I'm like, what is it about the mountain for me? And it's always been showing me wings, like you're here to get your wings. Or I, mean, I bought this image, this art piece of this feather and these wings, and it's clearly an eagle. And so I find birds of prey feathers all of the time. I'm used to finding, you know, crow and raven and hawk and owl and um, turkey vultures, you know, all kinds. And I, I pay attention. I pick them up if they're on my path where I'm about to step. I'm not like going to look for feathers. And I have seen a few bald eagles around here, but very rare and very few and far between. And so I have been knowing like there's something about the eagle. And then I've been seeing more and more and more symbols of it, you know, on the top of the flag, on the back of some trash box that I find on <laughs> nature, like, oh, here's the eagle, here's the eagle, and all these different forms. And then I, in the mid, it's very desert-like here, and I went in the lake, and I just randomly walked up, and I found my first eagle feather, you know, like this size. And I'm like, is this an eagle feather? I don't know. And then five minutes later, a bald eagle flew over me. And I was like, thank you for confirming. And now I only find eagle feathers. The last <laughs> six weeks is just out of control. Like, you know, I find little ones, I find medium ones, but usually it starts when I find big ones. So I have a collection of 10 really big ones. And then I went um, swimming the other day and, you know, I feel so fulfilled. I'm not looking to up the ante. It's like every time I find one, it, I just go into the present moment. I'm just like, I can't believe the abundance, like another one, like I don't even have a goal or what I'm going to do with them. I just collect them. And I went swimming the other day and I walked by this water, I was looking by this little bay and I was looking in and it was beautiful. And I dove in and then I saw this little feather floating on the surface. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go swim out to get it. And it was this cutest little feather and I stuck it on my forehead because I needed to swim. And I swam back and I go walk out back to this bay. Um, and suddenly I see there's a feather, the biggest one yet floating right there. And it was there five minutes before, I just didn't see it. But somehow even me, the act of taking the motion to go get that other feather, as little as it was and feeling delighted about it, somehow this feather appeared. It might've been there before, but it was perfect, the biggest one yet. And um, Anyway, I have found two more large ones since, like 10 altogether in one day with every kind of size. So um, I just wanted to share because sometimes, you know, we have like a message or an inkling in this intention and we make a bond with that intention, but we don't have any physical proof yet. It's taken nine months for me to even have this encounter. And what does it mean that they're only eagle feathers now? So, uh, yeah, that just came to mind in what you were sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's it's a very interesting story. And I love hearing your synchronicity stories. And I know that they happen often and all the time. And to me, that's just you're tapped in and you're living. Um, you're very connected, right? It's to me, it's a sign of being connected with ourselves and with the universe. And I had learned uh, about a part of the brain called the reticular activating system. 
So I went into the scientific side of it. I've been, you know, studying all angles on this stuff and uh, the reticular activating system. Uh, it's not only something that's fun to say reticular activating system, <laughs> but it has a really important purpose throughout time. Um, this part of our brain would assist us especially when we're hunters and gatherers and we didn't have the sophisticated um, uh, you know, societies that we have now, we really use this part of our brain to weed out what was poisonous from what was um, like poisonous berries from the good berries. And this part of our brain is what allows us to focus in on specific things and to ignore other things. And so when we're creating synchronicities, we are generating an energy, we're generating a focus into one specific area. And that part of our brain, along with a whole bunch of other things, including our soul and our connection, you know, the feedback loop with the universe is then weeding out all these other things so that we can start to hone in on that one thing and bring it close to us. And once we become aware of this process, we can do just as you mentioned in your story, begin to create the circumstances to collect a lot of, have these experiences with the eagle feathers and to see eagles more often. And because our brain is really, we told our, we told our brain to start paying attention to that. And it's going to, like you said, really hone in on it. And this is why someone can walk right by the most magnificent mystical synchronicity of their lives, right? And just not notice it because their brain hasn't been given the instructions to start paying attention. And then once we're paying attention, then like, whoa, not only, you know, paying attention pays off and it, I get all these, you know, a lot of inspiration comes from it, motivation, um, and also information and knowledge about which direction I should take in life sort of to help us make better decisions for ourselves. Um, but we can also start playing with it consciously. And once we start playing it with, with it consciously, we can play with it together. We can even start working on things and generating energy together. And so I think groups that have really tapped into this esoteric knowledge uh, have do use this information to begin to generate and interact, generate what they want from the environment and interact with uh, larger environments this way. So now we're going down, this is like a whole other topic, um, but this is, uh, there's different names for it, right? So synchronicity is kind of like, ah, oh, synchronicity is the, the cute name for it, but the study of it is very real. And we can go down the scientific route and we can start uh, discussing, um, you know, even just, for example, um, through social media or through television, right? Marketing, all of these use the same science. And it's just kind of wrapped up and fashioned in a different way for different cultures uh, and different types of people <laughs> using it. Yeah. Yeah. And so is there anything that you want to bring forth around the synchronicities? I know this is something we've been in, in dialogue with for a while um, as far as inviting people to co-create or pay attention. Like what are some of the ingredients of importance here? Um, I think the first one is to really be tuned into ourselves and to do that work where um, we're getting to know ourselves, we're eliminating a lot of the distractions and then to do healing work, right? We all have had different events and traumas in our lives, some more than others that have uh, affected our ability to um, see clearly in the world because you know that we have all these different layers that got piled onto us and piled onto our lenses of perception and our emotional body and so doing the healing work uh, getting to know ourselves doing the healing work and then really digging deeper into the ancestral stuff what who are your ancestors what did they bring to the table what is in your blood what sort of gifts are in your blood and in your dna 
And I think doing that work allows us to generate clear perceptions and allows us to use synchronicity on a whole other level to um, a greater benefit. And so that, that's what I would say in response to that is um, the clear, you know, the more we do that work, then the clearer perceptions and then the more fun it gets with the synchronicities because the synchronicities will mirror back to us what it is we need to heal, what it is we need to work on, what it is we need to focus on. And so depending on what, you know, is in between ourselves and um, what kind of emotions are there, um, blocks that we might have, um, it's first going to keep us moving in that direction to clear that out. And then it's, it's like, it's like a Russian doll. Basically there's always a deeper level to it. <laughs> and when getting into, for example, with the Uranian astrology, I started tapping into the patterns when I'd look at charts and understanding how everything is cycling around. This was a concept that I came up with very long time ago just you know what came instinctively this instinctive understanding was that we're spiraling around and every year as we spiral around we come back to those same kind of sensitive spots on the body right that have imprints and it could be from past lives it could be from different things that happened everything is rooted deeper but um, different things that happened in our lives and as we spiral around, we, you know, we keep on uh, moving forward and spiraling up and we gain greater wisdom and knowledge each time we spiral back to that point. So we are spiraling up, but we're moving up a level. And so we're going to see everything with a whole new set of eyes. We're going to have gained greater knowledge and wisdom about that one particular thing, that one thing that we're healing, that we're fixing, that we're readjusting in our lives. And so we're always moving forward and, um, and the synchronicities that came into play with reading charts is regarding sacred geometry and patterns and numerology. And so that's where it kind of gets juicy is if you're focusing on uh, a type of study like that, those synchronicities that you experience in nature, that you experience in your personal life with the, the work that you do, uh, other people experience with the work that they do as well. So we're all experiencing it. And then you have, you know, cer certain people working with math, really uh, complex math problems, quantum field theory, uh, you know, a whole bunch of um, different types of, you know, sectors of physics and stuff like that, where they're tapping into synchronicity as well to help them to help bring them to that next level of understanding and to that next level of uncovering and evolution in their work. So it can, uh, it does evolve <laughs> and it just keeps on getting applied to whatever it is that we're working on. Yeah, it's interesting as you're sharing, I'm noticing my body feeling really good right now. You know, whatever it is you're talking about, I'm just like, like feeling really like happy in my bones, even though it's not mental uh, <laughs> tracking right now. Um, so I have a question with you kind of, um, toward wrapping up our little first convo here is, um, what do you feel like has helped you the most in finding about how you operate, like your owner's manual, like what can you share something really personal about yourself, like how you've identified your true North or what your unique thumbprint is in this world that's really, you know, help your own navigation system, your personal navigation system? Wow. Um, I'm a very private person <laughs> and I tend to keep those things very secret. Um, but I'm thinking of something that I could share that I've uncovered. Um, I think um, what has been really interesting is understanding um, my connection to Neptune. And we've been talking about Neptune because it's full moon in Pisces, but in my, in my chart, I have a lot of strong placements connecting with Neptune and it just keeps on reconfirming itself. And this has been something that I've, um, you know, it's an aspect of my consciousness that I've always turned away from 
because it it is the part of me that will you know bring this kind of I become easily become spaced out right or I won't be able to bring my words out properly I won't be able to articulate what I'm saying properly because the energy is very nebulous right but this is this is the energy that um also allows me to tap into the shamanic world, right? To tap into all of these different layers and levels of consciousness. So I'm learning to embrace it and I'm learning to uh, work with that energy and not have it be overwhelming. So, um, and then I can also see that, that how, th how that configuration shows up in my children. And I also see how it is with my with my family, with my parents, who it comes from specifically, what family line. And by doing the names, by learning about my names and doing um, uh, the etym etymological research on the names and going back and really digging, I can see which as well, it shows up in that, in that work. And um, my grandmother's um, father's name was Gord which is water vessel. And so it shows up, it shows up there as well. And it, so, you know, we can kind of um, begin to put together this larger vision of who we are based on all this information and begin to explore it with joy, right? To really appreciate what those aspects of ourselves are bringing to the table instead of just seeing kind of the, you know, the negative aspects of it. And really going, what are the gifts of Neptune? You know, what does is like, you know, how can Neptune help to correct the world? And, you know, what kind of Dharma am I doing with Neptune? And, and looking at those things. So I hope that answers your question. Well, it was the least of my expectations. Like Neptune's pretty random. Like that's my Neptune's in Scorpio. And I have no idea what to make that mean, but Anyway, I guess I guess my bottom line is like, how has all this digging helped you accept yourself more or like what your main purpose is? I guess for lack of a better word of like what your kind of make and model that you've embraced of like, oh, are you an innate detective or, you know, where have you found where where you're identified with like, oh, yeah, this is affirmative for me and that has helped you inform your choices. In, 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 in your current life now, you know? Mm -hmm. It's helped it, it's helped it explain psychologically, right? How I approach situations. And so just by knowing yourself, that's like half the battle, right? So we know how to respond to things better. We know what environments we should go into. We know which ones we should pull away from because they're not going to be beneficial to us based on how we're hardwired and how we're moving around here. So I think getting to know ourselves on this level just allows us to move towards the things that we know we're gonna work best with and to move away from those things where we, environments where we know we're not gonna flourish. Yeah, and listening to your body, what feels good. Yeah, exactly. so yeah, in closing, is there uh, in light of you know your offerings these days in these, healing modalities um what what would you like to close with what would you like people to encourage them to research thank you for that question I think um earlier when you said I'm feeling good in my body as I listen to you speak I think what you were tapping into is what I want everyone to tap into and that is um that part of ourselves where we're just so immersed in the process and we're so in the flow and we just surrendered and we're kind of like a, we're our own mad scientist. We're feeling inspired and passionate and we're digging into our studies or we're digging into our work and it just feels so good because we're in our element and we're doing what is aligned with us. So that's the type of energy that I hope to share with people to help them find to, to sort of tune into that vibration and then help them find what their vibration is and then be able to tune into that and be in that space, in that passionate space where you just don't see time go by. 
because you're so immersed and you don't even need to eat. You know, those moments where just everything falls away, like, and you're just feeling so good. That's, I think, where everybody in the world needs to go for us to be creating what we're supposed to be creating here, really aligned with our path and our mission to help the world move forward in the right direction. Beautiful. Yeah, so how can people find you to do a little deep dive digging? Um, I have uh, a website, um, inspiringplayfulevolutions.com and I have some service offerings up there so you can reach me there. And uh, you can also reach me at 21st Century Weaver uh, at gmail.com um, to book a session or to just ask uh, questions that you have. Uh, I also have uh, Inspiring Playful Evolution YouTube channel and uh, 21st Century Weaver YouTube channel. Um, so you can reach me there. And um, <clears throat> I look forward to speaking with anybody who is interested in booking a session. And I just go over um, with your birth information, time, date, location, um, a whole bunch of systems. I just plug it into a bunch of systems, look at the numerology. Um, and then if we have time, look at the names because there's a lot of work involved in this, but I can guide, I'm basically guiding people to go and do, continue doing the work for themselves. Because I believe that that is where we really start getting answers when. Yeah. Well, I yeah. feel like that's a whole other separate conversation I'd like to have with you because it's so valuable and to really give people the inspiration and a, a guide into shining light on that part of their ancestral lineage. And um, so I will be sharing all the links below and to how to access you. And I also wanna just share that Jessica is a prolific writer and has written some beautiful high, high detective style, um, you know, where science meets mysticism. And I really, really appreciate your tone and the way you present things. Like it's very neutral. It just feels like, you know, a professor giving a presentation rather than, you know, elevating something over something else that just you have a very unique tone that really speaks to me. So I highly recommend everyone um, check out some of your writings and your YouTube interviews that also cover a lot of hot topics and in a broad range. So much respect, sister, and thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us today. Thank you so much, Farushka.